So look, we'll do the Q&A. I'll answer all your questions. I know that was everybody's favorite part. I, I can uh, totally get with you on that. Also, if in the Puerto Rico area on Sunday, we're going to do a uh, meetup. We uh, walk shelter dogs at uh, Amigos de los Animales. Follow me on Twitter. And uh, we do that every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Walk them on the boardwalk on the beach. Something good to do. We talk crypto. I treat everybody to breakfast afterwards, and that's it. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Now let's get into the fun times, which is Q&A. All right, let's do this. So let's see. This was a good one from Matt. I like this one. He says, uh, and if you're new to crypto, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for getting into some asymmetric returns, but a heck of a lot of risk. Uh, Matt says, when I was following the stock market, a 5% drop would be a horrible day. In crypto, I've become accustomed to it just being a Thursday. And that's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly what it is, man. It's, uh, you know, traditional markets, 5%, 10% is awful. You know, for us, it's like, well, that's lunch. So maybe we'll see what happens tomorrow for breakfast. And that's, uh, that's the truth. All right. What else we got? Julian, this is a great comment, and it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Hey, Rob, do you think there will be a sell and man go away event? This is a very uh, typical, a very common expression in the traditional markets, sell and man go away. And I got to tell you, if some things line up, this would be the time. Because we were always talking about the potential for a recession to come in potentially Q3 and Q4, right? So if we sold in May, that would be the middle of Q2, right? June would be the end of Q2. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Now, I'm not saying for you to sell or giving you any financial advice, I can't do that. But I'm going to take a real hard look at what's going on. And there's a lot of macro factors, which I use Ben's website. Uh, let me see. What did I do with it? All right. Because like all these macro factors take a look at. GDP, debt, what's the good stuff? Interest right now. Ah, here we go. Unemployment statistics, job openings and turnovers, sentiment. I'm just gonna take a look at uh, what the macro factors will, will say. Oh, I like this one, house prices index. Yeah, it's on and some other stuff, but um, yeah, I think it's uh, it could be it could really play true if that's the case. Sell May and go away. Not a bad time. So we'll see. Uh, Becky, hello. Looking forward to our interview on the 16th. I think it is. Uh, true 49er for life. Rob, NFA, but are you investing in alts? Yes. Thinking of jumping back into Solana, Aptos, and Avax. Not sure if I go that route or keep investing in alts. So look, we did a video on this, and uh, I said specifically. Here, I'll find it. It was just a couple of weeks ago. It doesn't matter. But I started to micro DCA around May. And then, because my job was to just start stacking cash, which is what I did. It was very hard. It's very easy to, to buy and buy and buy. It's hard to sell and it's hard to, to change your, your philosophy. But I did that because I thought there would be some more, some major downturn. And I didn't want to be underwater for so long. And uh, here we are. So just a couple of weeks ago, I said, well, you know, I'm going to start doing it again, just regular DCA. And the alts that I picked up were the same thing I always talk about here, right? So Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, these are like dailies. And then uh, you'll have like the Avalanches, the Cardanos, the Nears. And I think it's a bunch of, I, and I talked about those in, in the videos. Uh, but some are every day, some are every week. But I, I'm doing that because I'm in anticipation that I think we're going to go lower at some point. And some people will say, well, Rob, why, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just wait until it goes lower and then start buying? Because I don't know for sure. And I don't think anybody knows. Every time I think I know where the market's going, it's like, you don't know what you're doing. And then it does the exact opposite. So I'm just tired of that game. So I just say, okay, well, on this one, I think we're going to have you know, more of a downturn. So I just micro a little bit here. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, look, I think the next bull runs two, two and a half years, maybe three years away. So I got two years of a, of a runway to invest and move from there. And, if, and that's it. And even if we're in that, like, cause I know like, like, like the Gareth Soloways and the Paul Tudor Jones, you know, they started to believe that, or the Druckenmillers are like, look, we're going to be in a 10 to 15 year type of sideways action. 
And just like we saw uh, for the real for the S and P 500 back in the 60s and 70s, and I said that's true if you look at the at the charts. But also remember, I mean, they hit our all time highs. But also remember that during that time, there was bull runs going on in that time frame. So just like we took a look at those indicators, the the time and risk bands and and things like that, you can just take a look at that and go, well, okay, I didn't buy the top, thank God. But I mean, as time as it goes down, I'm gonna start to buy the bottoms. I mean, I bought Bitcoin at 15.7 because I was dollar cost averaging every day. This wasn't doing a ton of it. So I'll always buy the bottom. But the next big question is when do you start to buy as it goes up? So you dollar cost average in, you dollar cost average out. It's not, I'm not that smart. So that's what is what I do. Ah, uh, meme. Hello. Question, is there any way to hold AVAX on a hard wallet? Seems like you can only hold an AVAX on a wallet. I can see it from my ledger, but it is on my ledger. You can connect. I, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you can just do this. You can connect your ledger wallet to your to your AVAX uh, wallet that you can access. Um, I mean, you you control your private keys though when you do it online. Uh, but you can connect your Nano Ledger, I believe. Ledger and AVAX. Yeah, so take a look at this. Just Ledger and AVAX. Yeah. So you got to have a third party wallet, whatever one that you use, and then you connect your, your Nano Ledger, which means it keeps it secure so no one can go in there and start to move things around. Actually, I did a video on that. If you do digital asset news, avalanche staking, there will be a video on how to do that. This was a long time ago I did it. No, it was like six months ago. It wasn't that long. All right. <laughs> a noob is a noob. This is just a pullback noob. Everybody likes to say that, you know? It's like, ah, it's this, it's that. It's, uh, yeah, sure, pullback. Dump, sell off, whatever. Uh, hi, you still holding Algo? DCA, yeah, Algo, Algorand. I DCA, I think that's one of the ones I do for once a week. Yeah. Andre says, hey, Rob, I keep hearing ETH has to go lower, blah, blah, blah. I think most Ben are missing the deflationary aspect of ETH. Any insight? So my big concern was the Shanghai upgrade. I, and I correct me if I'm wrong, did that just get delayed again? Did I hear that right? I just saw a snippet somewhere. Anyhow. So that was my concern is that people were going to, when the Shanghai upgrade came about, then they were able to sell their Ethereum and then it was going to be a sell off and it would go lower. I'm like, great, I'm dollar cost averaging. This is fantastic timing. But unfortunately, uh, it looks like uh, when people, you know, uh, locked it up and uh, staked it because they couldn't unlock it, uh, they were at a little bit of a higher price. So now when they unlock it, it's not like they're going to be in massive profits. So people won't sell. Damn it. That's what's up. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be. I, I think it'll probably, well, who knows? I think it will be just fine. It'll stabilize and actually probably increase a little bit as people figure out, oh, they're not selling. But uh, you know, if it does that, you know, not super happy about it, but uh, eh, whatever. Ah, good question. Hey, Rob, you still believe in Meld? Greetings, Cedric from the Coin Beer event. Yes, from the Coin Beer event. We'll be there in London, June Eighth, I think it is, for the next one. Uh, yeah, matter of fact, I just talked to Ken. I just texted Ken not too long ago uh, from uh, from Meld, and they're going through some growing pains and uh, working through the the bear market. You don't hear too much about them because they're building, and and he updates me every so often. I shouldn't just have. You know what I'll do? I'll have Ken back on the show. I'll just do it. Give us an update about what's going on. But yeah, they're still working out and uh, go from there. TT says, Rob, do you still do the DCA live? We did. So the me, James, and Ben DCA live, it got replaced. Uh, James is still doing it with CTO and uh, ran, and they're doing the DCA. And it's because, like, it's, like I'll say it again, like our communities never really, we had a clashing of communities. And the whole goal of these, when we get together, is to alleviate some stress <laughs> and and when you guys got together with like uh, like the best answer group, it was a lot of fighting. So we're like, maybe our tribes don't really work out too well, or our message. So we just uh, 
I, I said, I'm going to step away. And James was like, that's cool. I'll get a couple guys. And then, uh, and me and Ben weren't going to do anything. And then Ben was working with Guy to do some, he does like these weekly videos with, with Guy from Coin Bureau. And uh, Guy's like, hey, would you like to, because I'm trying, because Guy was trying to build up his, his, um, uh, the Clips channel, Coin Bureau Clips. So he goes, hey, you want to do a weekly show? Why not? And he said, sure. And the guy's like, who else you want to get? And he's like, I know this guy. His name's Rob. And that was it. So we just did it like that way. And it's just, it's just, it's fine. Like I've watched the DCA show. It looks like a good show. It looks like they're doing good things. And I, th I think those communities jive better than our communities. And that's all about it is. The guy with the least worries at the end of the day is the winner. That's right. Skept. That's a good, that's a good handle. Do you use, do you use a centralized exchange without naming names? Have you used any decentralized exchanges? Yeah. I mean, I'm an American and uh, I mean, I'm in Puerto Rico, but so as far as like exchanges, I pretty much only use Coinbase and it's because they've stood the test of time. They're still around. And I use this thing called Coinbase one. It's like, uh, I always get this wrong. It's either 20 bucks or 30 bucks a month. And you don't, and it, it's up to $10,000 uh, for fees. So you don't have any fees. You just pay that, that, uh, that price. Since I buy every single day, uh, it more than pay, makes up for, for the cost of the, uh, uh, of, of the rates of the uh, fees. So that's what I use. And as far as like DEXs, yeah, I've used them many. I've used, uh, gosh, I mean, Uniswap is, uh, uh, the big one. What's the other? Let me see. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, Sunday swap. Yeah. If I can pull it up, but I think the question you're probably asking is, do you trust them? Well, <sighs> Dexes are doing a lot better than when I first got into it. And, uh, they seem to be a little bit easier to navigate and to actually use. So, yeah. Yeah. Uniswap V2 and V3. I've used sushi swap a couple of times, but it just sometimes I don't have liquidity that I like. And that's about it. But again, I don't really have to use it until I'm you know, doing some degen type of stuff. Usually most of the things are done with Coinbase. I buy things on Coinbase. I take them off and put them on my Nano Ledger. That's why I have uh, you know, these rules that I put up. They look like this. Uh, the middle one here. Don't leave any exchanges. So I just put them on my, my Nano Ledger. It's very simple. And if you don't know how to do that, it's okay. At some point, I didn't know how to do it either. So I made this website. It's 100% free. It's Dan Teaches Crypto's link in the description. I show you exactly how to do that step by step. Bite-sized pieces, right? Mm. <laughs> Rob, thoughts on Memalt, Shiba, Inu, and Doge still kicking. Is that a sign of more dumping? I got to tell you, as much as I'm like, I don't understand the meme coins, they seem to have resiliency. So who am I to say anything? And that's it. So uh, is it still kicking? Uh, how long has Dogecoin and Shiba Inu been in the top 10? Top 20. I want to tell you all the way through this entire bear market, right? Let me see. I, maybe I'm wrong. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, there's Doge. It's always been in like top 20, it seems like. There's Shiba Inu. And say what you want. There's resiliency there. Does that mean I'm going to invest into it? No. I mean, that's not my play. But does that mean that it's an awful project? No. It just means that Rob doesn't invest into it. Rob uh, has passed on a lot of opportunities. And I will miss a lot more opportunities than I will get in there. So that's it. Ah, Aaron says, do you hold in a Uniswap? Why do you think it hasn't gotten more attention since the centralized exchanges collapse? So I still own Uniswap. I remember when they had the airdrop. I think I sold some, but I, I always had that original, like I think it was like 300 Uniswap that they gave you. But uh, the question is, why haven't they gotten more attention since the centralized exchange collapse? It's because people are lazy. Well, there's two reasons. It's because people are lazy and they don't want to learn new things, and I get it. And then, of course, they hear about the hacks that are going on and 
and the different if you look for certain cryptos on there you don't know if it's the right one or if it's the right smart contract and people don't want to lose their money it's not about how much you make it's how much you keep right so i think that's part of the reason also people need an on and off ramp okay so if i have a i, I never carry cash but let's just say for example this is my dollar right my dollar this is my arculus card and i'm trying to find and put this into my decentralized exchange. Well, I need some way to take that dollar and put it into crypto in some way. So I need a centralized exchange to do it. And uh, unless I'm a miner and I mine Bitcoin, right? Which would be pretty awesome, honestly. So then I have that central exchange. It, it uh, uh, integrates with my bank. And then I start to do the trades. And before you know it, I'm just sucked into that system. That's the problem. If there was a way... It's just an easier way to, for my, like if my, oh, this would be great. And I'm, people aren't going to agree with me on this one because they're like, ah, you don't, they're going to track you. They're tracking you anyhow. They're tracking you right now. Who cares? So if my bank could in some way just be like, hey, we got it. Here's your cash in your checking account. Do you want that in a dollars or Bitcoin or Ethereum or Dogecoin or tomato coin or whatever? You know, you can you can do a straight swap and there's no fees. That's the magic of USAA. I'm not saying that's what they're doing. I'm just saying, wouldn't that be cool if they could? If they could do that, and then I could go to a decentralized exchange and swap things, that'd be that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, Tesla. Did we all smash the like? That's a great question. What channels do you watch regularly besides Ben's and Guy's? Hmm. For crypto, Altcoin Daily always seems to draw me in with those fantastic thumbnails. I watch Charles Hoskinson on his uh, on his AMAs. I'll check out uh, James and uh, the DCA show every chance I every chance that I have an opportunity. CTO Larson. Miss Teen Crypto, Crypto Stash, Tom Crown, and Jerry V. Hall, if he'd ever put a video out, lazy, and those types of things. But uh, other than that, the bigger stuff is uh, uh, Ryan Holiday and his, his YouTube channel about the Daily Stoic. That's the one I probably watch the most. When Rob Coin, there is no Rob Coin. That's a... That's a recipe for disaster. I have nothing. Oh, and Cryptocito, yeah. Cryptocito, who just moved to uh, UAB. Good for him. Hmm. Aaron says you can use your card on Uniswap for an on-ramp. I wonder, I didn't know that. Hmm. Let me see that. Mm. Oh, look at that. Ah, it's moon pay. Oh, there you go. That is true. Moon pay is a big, I don't really like them just because they're fees, but fees are fees, right? Some people would, some people were complaining about fees on Coinbase, about how high they were. And they would always tell me, you got to use FTX. Those fees are so low. Wow. Yeah, their fees were actually like 0.2%. When in reality, the fees were <laughs> 100%. So maybe I should stop complaining. And just uh, bite the bullet and use MoonPay. Excellent. That's pretty good. I think I'd known that. I just forgot about it. All right. Cryptocito. Matter of fact, crypto. Matter of fact, Miss Teen. Uh, crypto and uh, Stash are going to be on a show today. I'll probably check that out. Yeah, all right. I'm not too well lately because of hard stuff, but I guess I'm still okay. Norman, that's the truth. You know, we always say that you know, we want this, we want that. You know, healthy person has a thousand wishes and person with uh, not optimal health they only have one wish so just remember that when you're feeling like damn it i don't have i don't i didn't make a billion dollars today 
Rob, any info or insight on Alaska Gold Rush? So that's a play to earn game coming out. I want to say March. I think the TG, well, the 10 cent IDO is going to be March 13th, 14th, 15th, somewhere around there. It's interesting. It's an interesting game, and I'm going to do a deep dive on it, and that'll not be on this channel. It always is on any kind of deep dives for like risky plays are on Dan Degen, the second channel, which I haven't done. I haven't done a video on there for nine months, so that'll be the first one. Dirty Dan says, Rob, when you move, move your crypto from Coinbase, do you wait till a certain dollar amount to save on fees or just immediately move it? It's different for everybody because... If you're moving ERC-20 tokens or Ethereum-based, it's going to be pricey. So like if you're buying $5 worth of Ethereum or whatever, and you're like, okay, I'm going to move it because I need to move it. And then you move it and the fees are $325. you are like, well, that sucks. So everybody's different. For me, I buy a little bit more. So uh, it's not so much about the fees myself. I just want to get it off there. So sometimes I get lazy. I don't do it every day. Sometimes I do it once a week. Sometimes I do it every five days. Sometimes every, every nine, 10, it just depends. So it's all about what you can uh, afford. And then also the, the, the one thing I will say is just the worst you could do is just leave it on there forever. I think we all learn our lesson, right? Right? Right. Uh, hmm. Uh, where are we? XRP. You know, I just heard something interesting and I never really, nah, I'm not going to say it about XRP because, well, if I don't say it, then people are like, what's the deal? So the legal counsel, I forgot the gentleman's name for XR for Ripple. He said that uh, there's going to be, but I've, I've heard this for like months that there's going to be a, a legal decision uh, coming out within the next couple of days. And of course, I saw that and I'm like, I should really read into that because every time I see that, it never happens. So, but maybe it does this time. Who knows? It's the same thing like uh, a Bitcoin ETF. I've heard that since 2017. And then whenever, whenever, whenever anybody says, it's going to happen, Rob, you just don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, okay, maybe I don't, but it still hasn't happened yet. Uh, let's see. JML says banks want your house. Well, that's always true. Eggs are $8. Now, that is not true. If you go to Costco, you get an 18 pack for $4.99. I know because I eat eggs every day. Rent is super high, depending on where you live. That's very true. If you're in uh, Miami and Austin or uh, Los Angeles, sure as heck is. Food costs too much. Day of reckoning is coming fast. I don't know if food costs too much. I mean, I'm in Puerto Rico and it's expensive here, but it hasn't gone uh, out crazy. Mm. Yeah. So Emil says, I feel like Ben is right when he says we need gaming companies to incorporate crypto and not the crypto bros creating one. As someone who enjoyed gaming, they all look extremely poor in comparison. So, yeah. So, like, the thing is, like, these new games that are coming out for, blo like, Alaska Gold Rush, for example, that's by a legit uh, AAA gaming studio, which have already, which already has other games under their belt. And it looks pretty good. See, for us, like we're bringing to market back uh, Flappy Coin. And uh, that is something totally different. Those are casual games. Anybody can do those type of thing. But yeah, and then we were talking to somebody. This is all rumors. And if you go and spread this rumor, I will deny it. But the rumor is, the, the one of the founders I was talking to, uh, is how Sega is getting into the Web3 gaming industry and how they're really going to push hard and they've hit up their studios a couple of times. So I'm sure there's some article floating around about it anyhow. So, uh, but I thought it was interesting. I mean, Sega, Sega, it's pretty big. Tesla says, I don't understand most of the projects in crypto. Tesla, me neither. Honestly, I don't even know what they, what they do or why they're around. And did you know how many, how many projects do you think there are out there? Put in the comments. I'm just going to show you. This is what CoinGecko has registered. Uh, CoinGecko. 
says there are this many coins, this many projects, 12,292. Now, of course, there's some overlap and things like that with projects, I understand, but let's just say 10,000. There's 10,000 crypto products. Do we need all those? I don't think so. I think most of those are just junk, scam, worthless, no utility projects. And I wish they'd go away, which I don't think would be that bad. Thoughts on AI coins? I think they're all trash. Ah. I think most of them are trash. And uh, there's a great video from Coinsider, C-O-I-N-S-I-D-E-R. Go check him out. And uh, he's legit uh, investor. And uh, he just did a video, puts out, he said, look, most of these AI coins are just scams, essentially. And it was, it was just like in the day of the dot-com era. If you just put dot-com after your name or whatever your company is, you made a bunch of money and the stock went up. The same thing with the AI coins. What? Old bear. Our foods have gone crazy. 400% increase, 6 percent increase, shoot over 50% increase in nuts. I wonder, you know, if you're in the EU, if you're in Europe, I would tend to believe that because you guys are getting crushed, which there's a great website. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's called Trueflation. Probably about before, and it's uh, it's a free and it's kind of, what's great is that it uses uh, Chainlink <clears throat> as an Oracle and it pulls all this outside data to give us a real world analysis of real time uh, uh, inflation percentages. And it just, just like back in the day when the government was like, ah, it's only, inflation's like six or 7%. And a true inflation was like, no, then they're like 12%. And now as we're taking a look at it, it's reporting it's at 4.9%. And that's in America. Let me see. What is it in the UK? Yeah, things a little bit opposite. So I can understand where if you're in the UK, yeah, that's pretty bad. And you can break it all down. Well, you used to be able to. Health, household durable and daily, housing, transportation, food and non-alcoholic beverages. Well, Nah, it's a little bit better. Anyhow, interesting. Trueflation, T-R-U-flation. You can check that out. Yeah. So thoughts on how VGX plays out, finance or toilet. I think they would have been better if they just would have got rid of that VGX token. I know everybody was so hot on it. I'm like, oh, we got to keep it. We got to keep it. I understand a lot of people put a lot of money into it. I did. But I was like, I'm willing to risk it and just get rid of it so we can get this trash behind us and then move forward. But I was outvoted. So, you know, whatever. And now, of course, the government steps in. It's a security. And I know some people say, well, but Rob, every, they think everything is a security. Look, it's a little bit different. A security token that really has absolutely zero use because the actual company is dissolved. The whole point of the VGX token was to give you some type of value for the platform that was Voyager. It's the same thing with Celsius. The only reason for Celsius token to do anything was to give you value on the Celsius platform. Those are destroyed. They're gone. They're never coming back. And thank God. So I just don't, don't understand, like, do we have to keep those so much? Can we just do it and just here's a dollar amount and move along? But those really are worthless tokens. Ah, I don't know. Rob, I've been thinking my idea in D News. Thank you. With your Roy wallet, I buy from Coinbase is a pain. <laughs> That's true. Well, the ad is approved by Coinbase and the received address for your right changes, other options. You can try Ada Light or just do what I, I use this thing called Daedalus wallet, which everybody complains about because it takes so long, but it's super stable. And uh, I can do a lot of things. I can, I mean, you can do everything you can with your Roy, but you're essentially a node operator. So I use the Daedalus wallet. It's going to take a while to download, but uh, let's see. Ah, thanks. Hey, Aaron says I work for a Web3 startup. Sega reached out to us to have a meeting. Didn't go anywhere, but they're definitely looking around. Yeah. Because look, when everybody talks about how crypto is going to go to zero, and, Digital assets are trash and it's not going to do anything. And you just look at the big companies that are, are out there. I mean, for Pete's sakes, I mean, BlackRock, Larry Fink, the CEO, talks about how the future is tokenization. 
you know. And then he gets, uh, I mean, I think the gaming sector is going to be the next. I think it's what NFTs were. That's what the gaming sector will be because it has real world utility. And the reason why I talk about that, is, and I'll talk about this in the deep dive and why that is. But there's this thing called, it's a mentality thing. Loot boxes, Tamagotchi, and gambling, essentially. That's what I'll leave it up to that. Uh, Rob, do you like Kadena? It's an interesting project with great team, not to shill. I don't have any of it, so I don't really talk about it. And I don't really know anything about it, so that's it. Sorry. <laughs> Mima says, how much of inflation is this retailer taking advantage of the public perception that everything is going to be more expensive anyway? Yeah. It's a good question. Talk to the, the oil companies. It's, uh, you know, they have a profit margin. Let's say your profit margin is 2%, right? And you're like, okay, well, I have my, I have my revenue and I have my expenses and I'm going to have a profit of 2%. Then all of a sudden they're like, oh, inflation. Well, now my profit's going to be 10% because the price goes up. But hold on, wait. But did you, did your expenses go up? Well, not much, but we're now we're making 10%. Same thing. Look at uh, some of the biggest gainers, uh, as far as the oil industry, the last year, they crushed it. So it's not because there was a ton of inflation, just that they charged more. Mm. Yeah. So I almost says, hey, Rob, the team of the Elastic Gold Rush project seems mostly management positions. And the software dev and motion dev don't have a very impressive LinkedIn. So hope I'm wrong, but it looks sloppy. The game looks good. And uh, as far as like the LinkedIn and where they're from, it's not so much about, because a lot of them are on this um, crypto, what was it called? Ba, ba, ba. Crypto Society. Three of the, of the members were from Crypto Society. But one's got a pretty extensive background as far as uh, a game developer. Another one has a uh, pretty extensive background uh, as far as like managements of companies, um, bah, 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 investment partners and things like that. So it does look a little bit, but then the input that they have from the people at CryoWar, and again, I'll cover this all in the video, is, uh, is pretty impressive what they did. So this, this dump is lame. I need a real sell. Tell your friends in PR, Rob, dump it. All the people here are big Bitcoin maximalists. So, ugh. And sometimes it's annoying. When the Dallas Ford meetup? I don't know. It'd be a good one. 48 minutes. A couple more minutes, then uh, we'll get out of here. Yeah. Randy says, so people less than 5,000 on their account on Celsius are going to get their money back up to 70%. There's a great video from um, Aaron Bennett, A-A-R-O-N-B-E. I think it's N-N-E-T or two Ts, I forget. But he did a great video on uh, earn versus custody and how much you're going to get back and things like that. Me, for example, I have over six figures. I just don't really, I mean, I care, trust me, but uh, I'm just kind of writing it all off uh, and just waiting for, to see what happens. So that's it. I will say this though. Uh, and I, I said this in a tweet. If Nova Wolf, who is bidding for these assets, if they allow retail clawbacks, if they allow any retail clawbacks, I will make it my point on this show to talk about them every chance I can possibly get to dissuade people from using that new company. Because if they allow retail clawbacks, that's a bad look for the, for the entire industry. I mean, just, just bad. Mm. I think we got one more. Thank you, Bicky. Aaron Bennett, YouTube link. Any thoughts about buying stock in Coinbase? Well, it's probably a better time than when the, I, when the IPO came out. But um, in all honesty, I think Coinbase is going to be, uh, this is probably the kiss of death. I think Coinbase will be around here for quite some time. I mean, they've gotten all the way through I mean, this brutal bear markets, they didn't collapse like all the rest of the ones that uh, said they were going to be here for us and, and we're here to unbank you. And, and in reality, they were just, you know, screwing us in the background. So, I mean, 
they're still, they're still, in the, they're stand the test of time. So it looks pretty good. I'm just concerned about if you take a look at their, their reports, 48 to 49 percent of the revenue comes from prescription, prescription subscription models, which was that Coinbase one. And the other one was roughly 20 percent from staking services. So if, uh, if the SEC comes out and they crack down on Kraken, uh, what does that mean? What separates that from cracking down on Coinbase, even though they believe that it's a yield product for uh, staking? 20% revenue loss is quite big, but who knows? That's why I you know, put things on a ledger. So that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, all that good stuff. And don't forget on Sunday, we'll do the uh, dog walking. Follow me on uh, Twitter. Again, it's for shelter dogs. And uh, that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Adios.